here. And then when we were up on a rise, as far as you could see to those mountains, it looked like olive groves. This is probably a factory for processing the huge numbers of them. No surprise, they use olive oil for cooking, as another European was surprised. This was probably the old station at Bobadilla. some kind of containers for either olives or olive mash or something like that going to that processing plant. These are the older olive trees. Notice how they're multi -brew. sprinkling of uh, carrots around the plate for presentation. And where my thumb is is where my hostel is. Where I got off the bus was right where my finger is. Where I just had a little bite to eat was right here where my finger is. And where I'm standing is right there. And this is where we're standing right now. I just had lunch to my left. Up there is where Alhambra is. Off to the left, which we can't see, can't see Alhambra either, um, is uh, the cathedral, just to orientate us. I'm going to go back up here left. This is my first walkabout after I've got into town from uh, Ronda on the train this morning, about 12. This is Plaza de Isabella de Catalica, and I don't know who that is. It, and the street running from right to left is uh, Calle de Catolica or something like that. My first view of the cathedral, and it's probably from the back. I don't know at this point. I'm just looking for a bus. Here, right next to where I was shooting the cathedral, at the back is a beautiful entry to this building of tile work. I assume that's Isabella and Fernando. An interesting doorway, pretty, but not over the top. The front view of Isabella in chat. You have to shoot fast around here. Okay, this is the Plaza de Carmon, and we're going to leave that and go behind the city hall to the Corral del Cap This is Corral del Carbon. And what this is, and I can never pronounce it right, is a very old blast of just a few canvaseres that exist here for the silk industry. So a can caravan serai, or serai, so it's a 14th century Moorish caravanserai. Last of 14 that survived, so we'll go inside and take a look. Notice the Moorish horseshoe arches, including the big entryway arch. And this band across here, I think, is script in Moorish. Some of it's peeling off. some of the pretty detail on the inside. What it's supposed to represent, I don't know, unless it's the ever um, heightening access to Allah. And that, I'm just making that up. I saw another very early one, original, in Eastern Europe when I was there, but I may have lost the videotape for that, for which I will eternally kick myself in the butt for, because it was a very old one, 
and a man let me in as a special little favor I could tell because it was basically closed to the public. But what this functioned as is, for all, any other way to say it, a, a hotel for the silk merchants. Here in the lower floors they could house their animals that they brought the silk in with and then they would use the upper floors uh, for their living quarters and I think maybe even for storage of their goods although more likely that was down on the bottom. You can be sure that this uh, basin if you will or fountain uh, would have been used uh, probably for animals for sure and maybe even for human beings. But notice a little niche. It's always curious to me to see something like that. I was wondering in, when it, in the day when it was actually being used what happened there? Was that just a little niche uh, that unintentionally formed and water just kind of drained out onto the floor from there? Or was there an intent for that? And was this little hole on the top actually a fountain? And if so, what was the hole beneath it? Here another hole. And there a drain. And as it's been restored, it's used as office space now. Here in the entryway, a little more detail remains. It's down the little street in front of the uh, uh, Corral de Carbon. Uh, we're on the little street called Puente del Carbon, and Puente means bridge. This yellow gate sits on a street called um, Zacatin. Zacatin was at the on the street that ran parallel to the river when it was uncovered. Now this street is a paseo. In other words, at night it's one of those places where people stream back and forth endlessly, like I first saw in Albania. We're going to enter into the gate because what this originally was was a Moorish silk market. So this was originally the silk market. It was not only a market but it was a fortified market. It had ten armed gates and its own guards and the reason for that was because silk was very valuable and the kings prized it or the Moorish caliphs uh, prized it. Also mulberry bushes grew in profusion in the area around here. Irony of irony, after the Reconquista, uh, the Christians realized this was good for business and did not mess with it, left it alone as it was functioning. Let's look a little bit closely at this detail. Killjoy King Philip II shut it down, then it was burned down by mistake or by accident and rebuilt again in 1850. So this is something that came from the 1800s as a tourist souk, in other words, a marketplace. What we see, we have to take it for what it is and try to empathize with what it used to be. And now we'll go down Urmbita Street. This will give you an idea of all of the typical tourist crap. It can be sold, this is the place it's to be sold at, amongst any other nook and cranny that you can get. Most of the stuff probably made in China will seem authentic to the average person, I suspect. And they certainly believe it will seem authentic to the people they give it to. But if you're looking for stuff to clutter up your home with, here you are. So now we're going to exit through this gate and, and see the Neptune Fountain in the center of Plaza de Bib Rambla. And here we are. So we'll get past these restaurants and go out and get a better view of it. This is what a dinner here looks like. Just had a lovely chat with a couple, an older couple from Japan. Um, we just smiled at each other. I said, Konnichiwa. And they said konnichiwa and then we had a long conversation in English, I might add. See that the cathedral is only a couple of blocks away from us. During the 700 years of the Muslim rule of this part of Spain, uh, this was the dominant center of Granada, if you will. But in the last 200 years, as the Muslim control started to weaken, both because of its internal disintegration as well as the pressure from the Christianity. Um, the Muslims started flocking in here from the north which was being more and more controlled by the Christian element. After the Reconquista and the uh, Philip II 
uh, threw the Muslims out, as well as the Jews, and this became was redone as a square into something very large as it is now. It was quite small before. And the starting point for big Christian processions designed to impress as Hitler did. This is the statue of Neptune. He looks rather new, young. And Rick does not discuss what the significance of Neptune here is. Rick points out that this is a place that's multi-generational in that all the people here uh, are certainly of different ages but seem to be quite happily and contentedly retired as they hang out in this place. It'd be fun to be here in the evening perhaps. This looks very new, like something they pop some bucks on from the EU money. Past this bar that Rick defines to another little square. Mmm, some lovely smells coming down here of something cooking. Something earlier that I can only guess is a Muslim meat dish. Boy, did it smell good. We are outside the cathedral in this little square with a man that sounds like he really knows how to play the guitar. Now what's interesting is what is that for? Even more so this one up on this higher level. Maybe just to clean everything? A lady in English speaking about this tea shop as she entered it with the one word, wow. And it's the overwhelming smell of tea in the raw. It makes you wish I did drank tea, which I don't drink much of. Rick describes this front of the cathedral as a triumphal arch. And the reason for that is that that's exactly what it was intended to do. Apparently 500 feet or yards or whatever away from here, there was good solid ground on which they could have built a cathedral because it was empty. But rather than that, they wanted to make the point which Christianity did, of destroying the mosque and then building this on poor sandy soil. And in classic marketing strategy and Catholic hypocrisy, this church emphasizes Mary for a couple of reasons apparently. The uh, Counter-Reformation was in, uh, in, in sway and they were threatened from the Protestants who may have found Mary more palatable and apparently the Muslims who were trying, that they were trying to convert, definitely found Mary more palatable because she is uh, considered he uh, importantly in their religion. Their exit had we not turned down Altirmera Street. We'll continue around the cathedral, keeping it on our left as we go counterclockwise. It's quite pretty stonework. So there's a lot of this kind of stonework, but this is the prettiest I think I've seen or noticed. Okay, I'm now on the right side of the church from where we videoed those faces with Mary in it and looking at the entrance to the Royal Chapel. We're in Royal Chapel Square now. I'm just panning to get a little bit of it. There's some remodeling going to my right. There it looks like some kind of a well might have been initially there. Makes sense. Apparently this little square was surrounded by important Muslim buildings during its era. And when the Christians took over, they converted this building, uh, which was a haman, or a Muslim bathhouse, into this um, curious, painted, three-dimensional-looking whatever. <laughs> 